For Prima Media's Polity, I'm Tabi Madiba. Joining me today is researcher and analyst, Professor Raymond Sadna, here to unpack his column titled, SSBC's Rush to Dismiss Head of News, Patiso Mahobeni, and Avoid Adequate Investigation of Irregularities. Welcome, Raymond. Thank you. Why do you say that irregularities run through the whole SABC and Mahobeni saga? And why do you say her dismissal was irregular? Well, in the first place, um, the Code of Conduct says that before you bring charges, there must be an investigation. It was admitted in evidence by some of the other people who were appearing for the SABC that there was no investigation. It's not contested that there was no investigation. Now, had there been an investigation, it may have resulted in someone else being charged or no charges being brought, but certainly a bona fide investigation ought not to have led to charging Michael Penny with something for over which he had no control. So that was the first irregularity. Secondly, in the hearing, Michael Penny uh, made it very clear to uh, Advocate Kassim that she had no power to load programs, so she couldn't be held liable. That was ignored. Uh, in the process of judgment, the chair of the commission, according to the Code of, uh, of Discipline of the SABC, is supposed to impose a punishment and first call for pleas in aggravation of sentence and pleas of mitigation. He didn't do that at all. And uh, later the CEO imposed the punishment, which he had no power to do. But what is interesting is Advocate Kassim recommended a warning subject to Michael Penny uh, dissociating herself from a statement of her lawyer to the effect that the whole proceedings were a farce. Now, the lawyer then uh, presented uh, a statement to the hearing saying that she withdrew that statement, which um, Kasim asked her to withdraw. And she said, uh, Michael Penny associates herself with us. This becomes important because it later becomes one of the reasons why she is dismissed by the uh, CEO who has no power to impose a punishment, but also the reason he gave uh, was that she had not withdrawn this, which is false. And uh, that is known. And uh, it's not the truth, the reasons given. So there are a lot of irregularities in as the process unfolds later, when the human resources person writes and saying that um, she must present plea and mitigation to the CEO. There's no power for him to hear that or to impose a punishment. And why was the reference to breakdown of trust problematic for you? It's a phrase that is common in dismissals of people, that there's a breakdown of trust between the employer and the employee. But the question is, who was responsible for a breakdown of trust between Michael Penny and the CEO and, other, and maybe, maybe the board chair? Uh, there are a whole lot of irregularities that she recorded in a grievance letter by the, uh, against the board chair and the CEO, which had not been addressed. And there was nothing that she did that was a, a breakdown of trust. In fact, why they wanted to get rid of her, in my view, is that she acted in fidelity with the code of conduct and what was required according to the processes of the news division. One of which is, incidentally, one of the words is of the code of vision and values of the SABC is trust. And I think she took trust very seriously because trust uh, implies integrity. And she wanted to act with integrity and in good faith and carry out the policies of the SABC. The interference 
was in fact a breach of trust. So it is ill-chosen words by a person who himself was involved in breaching of trust. So Raymond, what has the dismissal on specific grounds got to do with the grievances raised by Mahopeni relating to quite different matters? And why do you see them as connected? The dismissal of um, Mahopeni does not relate, as I said, to anything that she actually had power over. And it also accuses her of not conforming to what uh, Kasim required in terms of withdrawal of the statement. One can debate whether it needed to be withdrawn or whether it was wrong to call it a farce. I wouldn't Absolutely. use the word farce, but there was a problem in uh, the process. However, when there is a grievance procedure and uh, Michael Penny raised these grievances against the chair and the CEO, in regard to the chair, how the board deals with grievances is a different matter from the CEO, which is a purely SABC matter. But if you are no longer an employee of the SABC, as Michael Penny no longer is from Friday, I think it was, the 28th, um, you're not able to give evidence orally, as far as I'm aware, in the grievance procedure. So the rush to get rid of her, in my view, was to block her from elaborating on the grievances that she raised. So it was not a bona fide reason for getting rid of her. And there was really, in my view, an ulterior motive to thwart the grievance procedures uh, against the CEO, possibly the chair as well. Because now she's not in the SNBC unless there's some special procedure she can't give evidence. And lastly, are you correct to place so much weight on there not having been an investigation? And does it matter if the hearing was done in a regular manner? Well, the hearing wasn't done in a regular manner anyway. But uh, apart from that, it is laid down as a precondition. You know, um, if you go to the dentist, uh, there was one dentist that I once saw who said to me, first extract, then, then x-ray. Now, obviously, you must x-ray before you extract. You must find out what the problem is if you're a dentist. Likewise, if there's a problem in the SABC, before you charge anyone, you must investigate what the problem is. You must have the equivalent of an x-ray to find out what it is that uh, led to this problem. What was the causation? Who was linked to the problem? How were they linked? There was no such link. And that made the subsequent proceedings fatally flawed because they were not preceded by a proper investigation of what went wrong, why it went wrong, and who should hold responsibility. There were other irregularities along the way, so it's not as if the rest of the proceedings were regular. There were problems in the hearing itself. Uh, for example, the chair did not hear pleas of mitigation, things like that. Thirdly, the CEO usurped the power to impose a punishment, and that is not within his authority. So even if uh, we were to say it uh, doesn't matter about the investigation, the rest of the proceedings were also flawed and irregular in various ways. So that I think um, the dismissal of Michael Penny is not only a problem for the credibility of the SABC, it is probably something that is irregular in law and can lead to litigation that can lead to a declaration that it was a wrongful dismissal. That was Professor Raymond Sutner speaking to Kuma Media's quality about SABC's rush to dismiss head of news, Patiso Makobeni, and avoid adequate investigation of irregularities.